I'm very happy to be uh, present at this meeting with you and uh, I'm very grateful for your invitation. Uh, the title is Solipsism and Philosophy of Mathematics, a comparison among intuitionists because we are going to consider three intuitionists of the first two the generations of them. But at the beginning I have to add that uh, I devote this talk to the memory of Anne Thurst uh, that died on March 7th this year and that uh, was so uh, nice to send me uh, the um, philosophical transcripts of the um, material that uh, he uh, kept in Hating's archive at that time, that is in 1992. Uh, so uh, I could devote a lot of my time uh, to, to read them, uh, to reconsider them uh, during my life. I'm uh, indebted to him. And the, um, um, the plant that you see is a sort of blackberry because it represents uh, Anne in his last years because uh, at the age of 60 it, he retired and uh, he uh, devoted himself to botany. So uh, it, uh, represent, it represents uh, well uh, his last uh, uh, interests and emotions. Uh, I said that uh, we will consider the three, um, uh, partially of course, uh, three um, persons, Brauer, Hating and Greece, but my focus will be on Hating um, because we know a lot of, uh, uh, of the work of Brauer because it has been published uh, in, during various years, but it has been published. Greece is less uh, well known and in particular Hating has some unpublished material that now is, is preserved in the Reich's archive in Harlem. Um, and um, he also published one paper that we uh, will, consider the will consider later uh, that is difficult to be found and that has never been uh, treated. So uh, he deserves uh, more attention by, by us. I have to add that um, according to Eiting, there were two main notions of solipsism. I, I have to say two main notions because in his unpublished papers he um, listed uh, more than two because he considered uh, many authors and so uh, when he wrote his uh, hand notes, uh, uh, he also uh, transcri transcribed the um, uh, their definitions of, of solipsism. But from a theoretical viewpoint, he considered only these two uh, that are. Uh, what I know immediately and with greatest certainty are the events that occur in my own mind or spirit. And only my mind or spirit exists. I have to stress the fact that he used mind, spirit, soul uh, as synonyms. For us, this is very uh, strange because now we are used to uh, neurosciences, so we are very careful in treating uh, and distinguishing these uh, terms, but at that time uh, uh, he considered them at, as uh, the same word, uh, uh, indicating, uh, having the same meaning. The summary of my talk is this one. I will briefly consider Brauer then Greece, and then we will see how hating charged the brow of solipsism. Then a 
general survey of Haitings unpublished papers, a brief, very brief comparison with Greece, and finally the notion of existence in Haitings work. Um, we'll hear a lot about Brouwer today, also in the afternoon, so I don't uh, feel the necessity uh, to um, present uh, uh, many details of his works, but I have just to mention two uh, of his uh, uh, works. The first one is a booklet that he, pu that he published in 1905 that was Life, Art and Mysticism, because uh, it was neglected by Hating when he published the first volume on, of collected work, uh, of collected works, uh, he uh, added in a footnote that uh, he uh, could publish only a part, uh, only very uh, small excerpts of, uh, of it because it contained so strange uh, uh, assertions that he didn't want to publish them. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it contained the uh, Weltanschauung uh, that Brauer had at the very ground of uh, his mathematical work. So we just mention this. And then we uh, will consider the only the structure of the Congress paper of 1948, because then later Adam will uh, talk about it. But it is important for us because Hating mentioned directly this paper as the place where uh, Brouwer had a so-called solipsistic turn. Uh, in his 1905 uh, uh, booklet, Brouwer expresses a mystical and hinduistic background. I mm, mentioned both these aspects because he um, quoted also um, Meister Eckhart, so there was not only an hinduistic background, but the main quotes that he did was uh, uh, from the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, what uh, is important for us, uh, or oh, maybe we can read something, but uh, uh, having contemplated the sadness of this world, look into yourself. In you there is a consciousness, a consciousness which, which continually changes its, its content. Are you master of these changes? You say no for you find yourself placed in a world which you haven't created yourself. What this self is, we cannot further say. And then uh, he adds, uh, this turning into oneself requires an effort. But if you have, however, you succeed in overcoming all inertia and proceed, you will find that passions will be silenced, you will feel dead to the old world of perception of time and space and all other forms of plurality. And your eyes, no longer blindfolded, will be opened to a scene of joyful quiescence. Uh, in God's wisdom, wisdom, and this is important, it has been ordained that man must part from what is dearest to him. That is, uh, you see that uh, there can be a wonderful world if you keep yourself uh, close into yourself. You are conscious of this fact, but you are very attracted from the outside world and you have something inside you that uh, puts you uh, towards the outside, an outside world, so to say. And this is the um, source of your pain. So, uh, 
you have to try to avoid it, but also you have to be, um, to be confident of the fact that this was, was God's wisdom. So, uh, do your duty and leave it as directed from within the self. Uh, accept your inevitable karma. This is the, um, the Brower's idea. But, but uh, this is not a good ground to uh, increase your desire to go outside yourself. So you have to do the best to survive in this world without suffering. So, summing up, life is suffering because it is, the, it is a deviation from the inner self. Still, it was God that wanted it, therefore we have to accept our destiny and simply try to keep ourselves as far as possible for, from what is outside ourselves. In his dissertation, where he presented uh, his uh, new mathematical ideas, he was obliged to avoid the philosophical part. But uh, we know from Van Stigt's uh, uh, work that there was a philosophical part that had been rejected. Uh, so we know that uh, uh, the mathematical consequence that we find in his dissertation were grounded of, on that part. We can see that mathematics must be developed alinguistically because language is uh, uh, meant to uh, go outside, purposeless, as an inner experience based on the a prioristic basic intuition of time so that it can be developed inside man. This is uh, the main ground. In 1948, he describes uh, the steps from the inner self to the sciences. And we read only the red uh, parts. We, are, we, we have consciousness with his initial phenomenon that is a move of time. By a move of time, uh, we have a present sensation that, sensation that gives way to another sen sensation. And through this distinction between past, present and past, consciousness becomes mind. So we have uh, a consciousness, a move of time, mind, causal sequences, things, and individual. These are the Brower's steps. Uh, and we had, we had, uh, um, a, we, we did a strange uh, uh, assertion by stating that there can be no proof of the existence of other minds. And here is the quote. Um, it is unreasonable to derive it from mind. Uh, mm, uh, mm, by the, so the choice of this term, uh, mind, the subject in its scientific thinking is induced to place in each individual a mind with free will dependent on, on this individual, thus elevating itself to a mind of second order experiences. Quod non est. But for our comparison, it is important to stress just the list of the steps. Consciousness, time, mind, causality, objects, and living beings. Uh, it is important uh, to stress that there is no allusion to the space and that he had a negative attitude with respect to, to such steps. Uh, we can see a disclosure to the possibility of other people when, at a certain point of this, uh, of this paper, he, uh, he stated, only through the sensation of the other's soul, that sometimes a deeper approach is experienced. 
uh, but uh, what characterize, uh, characterizes him, according to me, as a solipsist, is the fact that uh, closure in the innerest part of our self is considered the best way to avoid suffering. Mm? And also I have to add that this uh, kind of solipsism is at the root of his mathematical intuitionism because uh, he wants a mathematics that could be in some sense uh, coherent with uh, uh, this uh, general viewpoint. Now, a brief look at uh, uh, Cornelius Gris. Uh, Gris was an intuitionist that uh, died uh, aged 55, so we, he couldn't uh, give us uh, uh, all his possible uh, reflections, but he wrote a small book of uh, um, systematic philosophy, so to say. And uh, it, it was uh, this book, uh, uh, Idealistic Philosophy, it is written so because it is Dutch, it was not a wrong transcription. And uh, he um, expressed the, the following uh, um, epistemology. The a priori is the condition of any experience, it was um, in Kantian style. And uh, it is the fact that the subject distinguishes himself uh, not herself, uh, they always use this uh, uh, <laughs> male form, distinguished he himself from the object. And the original datum that consciousness grasps by attaining its own fullness is the subject distinguished himself from the object, but the one has no meaning without the other. So they remain, in some sense, linked to each other. Uh, the unification of remembrances is the I, which is always accompanied by a certain set of experience, the body, and by other experience, experiences that are linked to each other in a stable way, the bodies of other beings. We believe in the existence of other people since we see an analogy between the body of some of these and our. Furthermore, we see an analogy between their behavior and ours. And so we suppose that uh, they have a certain level of consciousness. Only when we have a spiritual exchange with them, we realize that they have full consciousness. Uh, the original datum can be considered from three different viewpoints. Philosophy, that is the most complete viewpoint. Mysticism, that, he says so, uh, mysticism leaves what philosophy both comprehends and leaves. And mathematics. Mathematics consider the object isolated from the subject as far as this is possible, because we have seen that according to Greece, there is always a linking uh, subject-object. Uh, we have seen that this linking, if it is considered from a philosophical viewpoint, uh, has at a, as a consequence that the individual grows only through contact with others. Every man is responsible for all other men and spiritual development doesn't take place without material growth. So he uh, keeps together spirit and body and uh, all people also, all together. As for uh, mathematics, it, it starts from the distinction between subject and object. So mathematics uh, somehow um, obliges us to make an effort to keep distinguished subject and object. And this is a 
scheme for producing entities and consequently it grounds natural numbers. So his uh, uh, original datum of consciousness is at the origin of mathematics in this sense. And this is, the, this is why he um, comes from his philosophy to mathematical intuitionism. But he uh, stresses the fact that mathematics uh, is a sort of uh, uh, unnatural way of proceeding and also the fact that for this reason uh, the further mathematics proceeds in this activity of producing entities by further distinctions, the more imprecise it becomes. So, therefore, vagueness is intrinsic to mathematics, but it is also indispensable for its development because uh, it is at the origin, origin of infinite sequences. Uh, the last point uh, regarding uh, Greece is, the, is that uh, he embraced uh, intuitionism, uh, but he criticized the notion of negation that Brouwer had given, uh, because uh, his definition of negation was a mental construction that cannot go further. You begin with it, you try to go on, and uh, then we, you find a sort of wall uh, in front of you. Uh, according to Greece, this is not coherent with the starting point of intuitionism, because intuitionism has to start with something evident and finish with something evident, passing through steps that should be evident. But how can be evident the starting point of uh, these constructions, of this construction uh, that cannot go further. Uh, there is uh, some problem with it. And uh, we explained it in this way. You see that uh, I quote from 1948 uh, because uh, uh, he specified this uh, criticism uh, in this later paper. For example, if we suppose that a fraction satisfies uh, the equation x i 2 is equal to 2, and we find a contradiction because for each fraction that is substituted for x, the first member differs for 2. Making the, the assumption that the proof is given, while that proof appears to be impossible, is inconsistent with the constructive and intuitive starting point, since the existence of a proof is, it, is identical to the fact that it was given. And he proposes to substitute the old definition of intuitionistic negation with the confrontation between already, already existing entities. Okay. This was hating. Uh, his life was longer than uh, Grace's life. And uh, we have to start from the fact that hating charges Brouwer of solipsism uh, in his obituary, for example. Uh, his, he writes, uh, uh, we have seen that Brouwer um, died in 1966, so uh, the following year, he, uh, um, Hating wrote a lot of papers about uh, Brouwer's thought. As early as in 1907, Brouwer connected his philosophy of mathematics with the philosophy of science. In later years, he developed philosophical ideas which led him to solipsism. So you uh, see that he stresses the fact that only in later years uh, 
there was uh, this uh, switch. And uh, he uh, adds, he explained his ideas in his lecture before the Philosophical Congress in uh, 1948. That is the lecture that we uh, quoted at the beginning. In 1968, by describing ba Brower's thought, hating states, Brower's line of thought may be characterized as a solipsism. Brower's philosophy of mathematics is intimately connected with his general philosophical ideas. Attention. Only the solipsistic turn of the latter is inessential for his foundations of mathematics. He has sometimes described mathematics as an activity of the mathematical community as a whole. Uh, so to say, it is a way to say uh, uh, it was not convinced of this solipsism because uh, uh, he uh, told us that uh, there is a mathematical community and that mathematics is an activity of all of us. His construction of intuitionistic mathematics, and this is a high things, uh, way of grounding intuitionistic mathematics is nothing more nor less than an investigation of the utmost limits which the intellect can attain in, he, in its self-unfolding. Um, Hating uh, stresses a lot of time that there is no reason to uh, have a um, general philosophical viewpoint uh, uh, such as uh, Brower's viewpoint uh, to uh, accept and to do intuitionistic mathematics because the only thing that uh, we need is the uh, capability of, distinguishes enti of distinguishing entities. And this is the simplest thing that we can do uh, and we just, uh, uh, and we have just to um, remain faithful to this activity. This is a simple way of proceeding and um, it is also a way to avoid what he uh, calls uh, metaphysic. Metaphysic in the sense of uh, adding uh, entities about which we are not able to specify uh, the way of building. Um, and this is also the, the same. Uh, Brouwer sometimes defended the solipsism and though he didn't consistently apply this to mathematics, he saw mathematics in the first play as conceived, conceived in the mind of an individual mathematician. And the communication with the colleagues comes afterwards and is always troubled by possibly misunderstanding. This last fact is true. <laughs> um, but we have to say that Hating sees a solipsistic turn in Brouwer's paper, in Brouwer's lecture, because uh, uh, Brouwer gave some counterexamples to classical mathematical properties by referring to the so-called creative subject. And that was the reason why Hating saw just in that lecture the origin of mathematical, uh, of um, Brouwer's solipsism. We don't have to, to, to see this. In his unpublished writings, Hating considered the solipsism because uh, it was invited at a meeting. There was uh, a meeting about solipsism also before this one. <laughs> uh, in, uh, uh, in 1974, I think, no, uh, it was in 1978 because uh, around that, uh, that, um, uh, that moment. And uh, yes, it was uh, truth that supposed it. We have no surety about, sureness about it. And he describes an epistemological use of it. Uh, 
he starts from the fact that we have consciousness that is full indeterminacy. The self has not yet distinguished itself from the not self. And it, it is very rich uh, in man, while animals have a, a less intricate uh, consciousness. In man it is very intricate and produces a strong emotion of beauty that we couldn't survive if we experienced it for a long time. So we have an inner form of protection in order to survive. And this uh, protection consists of the possibility of isolating the self that is, groups of sensations are separating from each other and are distinguished from the group of sensation which the self consists of. Once objects are identified, they need to be linked to each other. Then we have temporalization and after that, spatialization. So, if we see the list of these steps, we see in Brouwer and in Hating, we see that in Brouwer we have consciousness, time, mind, causality, objects and living beings. Hating, consciousness, uh, individualization, that is at the uh, very ground of mathematics, other minds, objects, time, space. And uh, it is in important that uh, he mm, quotes from the book, from the, the paper of Mithoff that solipsism gives prolegomena to any philosophy. In this sense, in this uh, meaning, according to this meaning of, of solipsism, we necessarily start our knowledge from the, the fact that we know primarily and for certain only our representation. Uh, but nobody can affirm to believe in solipsism because communication presupposes believing in the existence of other people. And there cannot be a theory of solipsism also because a theory, according to Hating, always presupposes a reality against which to be checked. If we verify the content of our consciousness, we realize at first that other people exist as a mind because our first exchanges with them are exchanges of thoughts that enrich ourselves. This is wonderful, I think. Uh, this testifies that they share with us concepts and feelings. And this is a piece of that paper. In a second moment, we attach people's bodies. Only in a second moment, uh, we attach people's bodies like ours, as long as, and this is a quote, as long as he doesn't physically attack me, another ma man's mind is to me more important than his body. And even if he threatens to attack me, I try to change his mind, not his body. Then we become sure that the our world exists because we have this inner um, conviction. Uh, but, and in this sense, there is a similarity between him, him and uh, Greece. Each distinction, we, we have seen that there is this capability of uh, distinguishing, but each distinction is relative because in consciousness is all is mixed. Um, according to Eating, we construct a certain idea of the world that produces some expectations, and this takes place also according to the education received. So our view of the world depends on society. And, but it allows us to distinguish between dream and reality, and it uh, uh, allows us to survive. 
it is very nice uh, to see uh, in his paper that uh, he wrote uh, why I believe, do I believe that uh, object exists uh, also when I didn't, uh, also if, when I don't see them any longer? Because my mother explained to me this. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, also our sensations exist, and uh, finally we arrive to abstraction. But, and this is our um, final point, because abstraction uh, is uh, the, um, the question that uh, is linked to his general view about existence. So we can avoid the comparison with this and go directly to, to existence in Hating's work. We have said that Hating was not a philosopher and didn't want to be a philosopher, so he didn't write a general philosophy, but uh, he um, considered many times the notion of existence. Till 1974, only inside mathematics. Uh, but in uh, that year, he was invited, <laughs> and you see that uh, invitations are very useful to extract from the mind of people what they otherwise wouldn't say. Uh, he was invited to, to a meeting, and we will we, we'll see what he said. Uh, so, at the beginning, he only wrote about mathematical existence. I listed uh, all, the st uh, all the papers uh, in which uh, he uh, wrote about existence because uh, I am uh, very rigorous, but now we don't have to read all of them. We have just uh, uh, stressed the fact that he was consistent, convinced that existence as the absurdity of not existence I mean, uh, proof uh, by reductio ad absurdum are, uh, according to him, uh, incomprehensible. They, uh, how can you say this exists if uh, you have just proved that it is impossible that it doesn't exist? So uh, it was incomprehensible for him. And uh, he stressed that uh, the axiomatic viewpoint uh, was, uh, doesn't express a position about the existence of objects. It is open to all possibilities. Um, okay. Yes, we can see just this, uh, this latter uh, viewpoint. Uh, in 1968, uh, uh, when uh, he wrote about Brouwer, he, he stressed that there are three main approaches to mathematics. Conceptual realism, uh, also called platonism, uh, that uh, was, uh, um, had a revival, according to him, uh, because uh, um, due to Tarski's uh, work. Mm? Formalism, that for uh, that means only deducing for action and constructivism. Yes. Uh, this is uh, his uh, lecture, uh, Science, Belief and Religion. If we want to see, to read any uh, um, particular or any detail of the, this lecture, you can read uh, my last paper, my latest paper, that has just been published from, by the Catholic uh, University. And uh, in this lecture, he was required to consider the notion of existence uh, in science and uh, in everyday life. And uh, his viewpoint was that, there, I, I will be very brief, that this is the notion of uh, uh, science in general. That this is common to both natural science and human science. Uh, 
science introduces a structure into experience by using mathematics. The scientific structures, structure includes more than direct experience. Science aims at unity and science must be free. Then he considers the notion of existence. Uh, we say that an object exists when it is associated with an abstract entity of the structure in which we organize our experience and when it fulfills certain conditions, which I cannot specify here, but which cannot correspond in outline to the syntax of the noun. The physicist is convinced of the existence of the electron as long as it works well in theory. And it is interesting that in this case, he recalls the bishop Jan Ramsey that uh, presents uh, uh, some religious notions like miracle and God by attaching them a kind of existence that is defined as disclosure, as limit notions. Uh, hating refers them, uh, but uh, he doesn't share the same viewpoint. Uh, he, uh, consider, uh, he considers the fact that here there is a science and what, all what doesn't satisfy the uh, conditions that science put, puts, uh, it is a way of existence, but it is not a scientific way of existence. Uh, he uh, is very clear cut. And now the final two slides. Uh, in the unpublished writings that were written four years later, he, was, he reconsidered the subject existence and uh, he uh, writes a, a, a list of abstract objects. And uh, you see uh, in environment, uh, people, uh, memories, communication, space relations, uh, and so on. He says that the, the most people uh, come to the fifth level and uh, there remains. Then there is uh, astronomy, microscopically small object, and theoretical uh, physics. Here, existence has all become fitting into the theory. Hmm? And uh, his, yeah, uh, his, uh, his uh, last reflection that presents uh, some doubts, and it is very nice to end with the doubts because uh, philosophy is always open. He wrote, uh, each of our abstract concepts begins with some, something simple and evident. So does existence. First, there are the objects of my direct environment, which exist. Last, there are stars and mesons. How many steps are there between these? And how does the concept change as it passes from one to the other? God, real numbers and large cardinal numbers are at the top of such steps. At which steps do the rules for the existential quantifier hold? So he mixes uh, God's uh, existential quantifiers, uh, all abstract objects, but uh, he uh, don't uh, um, separate them in a very uh, uh, clear way, in a sure way, as uh, he did, uh, he had done four years before. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>